Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett, and today I'm going to get into a video, and this kind of relates with the last video. I felt like I didn't really answer the question properly in my last video on how do you know if you have a RAT, a remote access tool, in your computer, and how do you know if it's gone. In um, that last video, I'm going to keep it up because that was more applying to if there was state which is government level doing this to its own citizens or to you. And this is a huge possibility when you get into places like Middle East, uh, Syria, um, um, Iraq, Afghanistan, and then m many African countries and, and China and stuff like that. These are the places that you got to worry about that. And that's kind of where I kind of weld on that for a bit. But in this one, I'm going to get into what happens if it's just an average hacker. Uh, not not state level, but something below that. Well, the thing is, is uh, I'll have timestamps out, out so you can just jump to parts that you want to go to. But uh, first things first is you need to make sure that you don't get the malware onto your device. If you don't know what a rat is, then feel free to check out the last video. I got other videos on what a rat is and stuff of this nature. And also on top of that, I have um, links to other videos getting into uh, detail, how to find out if you got viruses on your computers, how to find out uh, like how to deal with logging on computers, um, God mode on your computer and stuff like that. I'm going to tap into some of those things, but to keep this video as short as possible, I'm just going to link to many of those things down below in the description. But um, anyways, as far as this goes, first things first is you need to make sure that you don't get the malware in the first place. Obviously, this is not 100%. That's why you need backups for that. But what do you need to watch out for? So there's two ways, two primary ways that a computer can get malware on it. Malware being a computer virus. It's just uh, malware is more a technical term. And a computer virus is a narrower term. Um, so I'm just going to say malware for, um, you know, students and stuff like that so they understand what I'm talking about. But um, as far as things goes, there's two primary ways that you can get malware on your devices. First is physical. The second is remote or virtual. So physical being that either a person had direct access to the computer, maybe they put a CD on the computer, or did something physically to the computer to mess around with it. Now, the other physical is either you as the user being tricked or you as a user being curious and the curious killed its cat, or more in this case, the computer. So what happens sometimes is hackers will go to, uh, they'll, they'll find the targets that they're going after. So you or you know whatever a shop or whatever and they will have a thumb drive they'll just leave a few thumb drives or one or two thumb drives around and um in hopes that you as the targets will pick it up and plug it into your computer or they will like go to events like ces or something like that they'll hand out thumb drives and and yeah some of the thumb drives will have the proper information but um, once you plug it in it will start downloading the um, malware onto the device this is a major thing to realize um now there's instances there's theoretical instances where this can, could happen in theory but there is actual real instances like in nuclear power plants where this actually has happened in a few other places like on military bases, United States military bases, and a few other places where this actually has happened. This is actually one of the major reasons why there's a major policy almost worldwide on most first world countries for their uh, government employees and military employees to not plug in random USB drives into their computers um, to, to make sure that it is a safe USB drive being, oh, you bought it from the store or that someone trustworthy gave it to you. 
that's a major thing that you have to keep in mind because that is a huge tactic. There's a few other things I could go into there. Um, and, and just add it into here real quick because I can. Um, the, you, you'll find the same thing that will happen on some of these charging stations when, um, like in malls, airports, and whatever, you might have a charging station or, or something that looks like a charging station and uh, that way you charge up your phone and um, basically what would end up happening is on less secure phones, which is most phones, unfortunately, they will start downloading malware or uh, um, uploading whatever to the charging station or, or the fake charging station in this case to uh, whatever and the hacker has full access to certain portions of the phone, call logs, contacts or more depend on some of the cases that's a major major thing in fact um there's other examples i can give but uh, i mean even on phones you got to watch out for these things even for things like that so as far as that goes um and and by charging station just note that um, if you're plugging in the stuff to a wall outlet, like you're, if if you if you plug it into the wall outlet, you're, you tend to be fine. But if you got to plug in from USB to your phone and you don't know what's on the other end of the USB, well, that's where these hacks come in play. So if it's like a simple wall outlet, that's not really much to worry about. Um, at least if yet, um, there's there's methods of messing up a phone and whatever but you can't really get information out the phone through that method as of yet but uh, with the usb parts uh, like if you got to plug in a usb into the charging port and you don't you're not familiar with that charging port and whatever y you can run into some problems so as far as that goes there's uh virtual so virtual being you download it or maybe you went on a site and there was a drive-by drive download or something of this nature. Now, um, one thing to note is, is since we're talking about downloads with malware and whatnot, you, that there's uh, with, with mobile phones, you, you have the similar problem where um, if someone texts you a picture, if it has uh, malware included into the picture, then that will automatically be downloaded into the phone. Uh, this is why I personally recommend, and many other people recommend, that you, if, if you have the ability on your phone, to look at your settings and make it sure that the MMS um, won't automatically download. MMS being the messages that are video, audio, or, um, or picture. That way, they're not automatically downloading. And that way, if some random number sends you a message, the image is not automatically downloaded onto your phone. And you can say, I don't recognize this number, and you just delete it. Even if you, you know, say, oh, there's a picture that's supposed to be there, you don't recognize the number. It could be, you know, it can have malware within stuff. And uh, you can have problems within there, especially if the phone executes the stuff. So with that in mind, there there's things like that to keep in mind. Um, same thing with computers. There's things like that to keep in mind. But that that's the reason why you need to make sure that they have proper antiviruses and proper systems in place for if you get a malware. Don't expect that uh, you can stop all malware. The fact is, is it's just ludicrous to think that you can just stop all malware. You need to have plans in place for when you get uh, any any piece of malware, um, even even the lightest stuff. So one thing I'll advise with a computer is if you do, if you have the ability, uh, I, I'm using AVAS as an example, but you can use whatever you want. Um, so with there, just so I, I, I don't mess up the boarding and whatever, um, what you want to make sure that you have is hysteric um, uh, scanning, and you can look up the, the actual stuff there. I actually have videos onto that. And basically what that is, is it, it, 
it is a detail scan. I, 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 again, I got detailed videos on that, so just check that out so I don't make this video any longer than it needs to be. But basically, you need to make sure that your your uh, antivirus systems have scanners like that, um, and even more so uh, with uh, PP and, and stuff like that. The reason why is you want to make sure that your antivirus is the best it can be especially if you're paying for it. Um, even if you're not paying for it, you need to make sure it's the best it can be. You need to make sure that it's actively scanning. And this means that, oh, you're downloading something and as you're trying to install it or download it, it will actually run the scans through it and see if there's something wrong with it. Even even if, you know, you had some um, online browsing scanner so like with google they have their own scanner um and and that's good and all but what happens if it misses it you need to make sure that your own personal scanners are are used as a backup for that so with that you you basically need to make sure that your scan your um, antivirus is worthwhile antivirus is not going to be a cure-all for it but it will stop a lot of it keep in mind that if um, it, it doesn't matter if you're using uh, Avas or Kaspersky or whatever it may be, the fact is, is if it's a brand new malware that no one's ever heard about, or if it's um, something exploiting a, a zero day attack, I got videos into zero day attacks and stuff of this nature. But if, if it's something of this nature, then the antivirus company won't know to to uh, look for that given thing. So that's a major thing to keep in mind. So um, what some of these antivirus softwares are doing is they're trying to use some type of machine learning in order to um, better protect you. Because, you know, it, it's, it's as I said, if, if the antivirus company does not know about a given problem, then there's no way that they can scan it uh, based on these scans itself, except through machine learning. The machine learning por portion is just looking for suspicious activity, suspicious um, stuff. And you might um, either you might have already or might will one day run to where if you're trying to run a program, it says this program is suspicious. That's why is it's using some type of machine learning. And it, it can't pinpoint what's wrong or it can't pinpoint if that's an actual problem. But um, the, the, the thing says there's something suspicious here. I need you to look at it. Now, the severity of this being that, oh, every time you're, you know, trying to connect to the Internet is depending on, um, you know, how, how well it learns, if it learns at all, if it's just a pre-programmed set. Oh, if the computer does this, 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 then trigger a suspicious and um, and then let the person um, flag it as a false flag or or not. So there's that. Um, now let's say that you um, have the virus on your computer, or you feel that there is a virus on the computer. Uh, given that it's Windows. One of the best things to do is go to the, first off, go to Task Manager and start looking at performance and, and try to look and make sure that everything's not jacked up. As I said in past videos, is um, when I get into the upgrade portion, is if your stuff is on a constant 70 plus percent at idle, like if, if you're like, for example, using Adobe Premiere or some heavy in task um, on your computer, that's kind of normal to have it up to 70 plus, even up to 100% at some times. But if, like I said, for example, if the disk drive was going up to 70% constantly or memory or something like that, and, and it's just completely idle, then that's telltale signs something is probably wrong or your machine is that out of date and you need to upgrade it. But more more than likely, you need to make sure that uh, there's nothing bad going on. 
Now I have uh, videos on this and this is the event viewer. You can actually easily access this and a few other things through the God mode. Um, I'll have a link down below to the Dropbox folder. Just go to the Windows. Feel free to check out all this stuff, by the way. Um, I actually have it for you, the viewers. But go to the God mode. And I have a video on how to set up God mode on your computer as is. But um, in order to make it super, super easy for people, they can just go to here and just download that onto your computer. It, it, given it's Windows, it will allow you to use it. So um, God mode is basically, um, it, it has all the stuff in one place and it, it makes it a lot easier to, to mess around with your computer. Yes, this is Windows 10, by the way. Uh, this should work in previous versions with no problem. Uh, feel free to, to look around on here and um, there, there's a few things that I would like you to look at. First of being is the um, Windows Defender, make sure that's good and all. You can have uh, Windows Defender plus something else. It's highly advise, uh, advisable against to using um, two antivirus systems, but since Windows Defender comes with Windows anyways, there's, um, you know, you, you can have it running as long as it, it plays nice with whatever you add. So like, for example, for me, it's AVAS. Yours might be something else, but make sure it plays nice. And, um, and if it doesn't, go with whatever you trust more. But um, but the reason why you shouldn't have multiple antiviruses is mostly because of resources is that are competing for resources, and you'll have problems where they're trying to flag each other. But like like I said, with Windows Defender and uh, many other outside programs, they outside programs understand there's going to be a Windows Defender on the computer anyways. Windows Defender understands there's going to, there probably is going to be other programs. And given a stress of programs, they'll say, oh, this is not suspicious. I actually trust it. Now, um, as far as this, uh, we're going to be taking a look at event log. And I'll also recommend that you take a look at firewalls and, and, and we're going to jump into that in a bit. But as far as the event log, there's a few other things that you can look through that God mode for that can help you out. In fact, there's quite a bit in it that can help you out. But... You need to go in and look at the um, errors that you got. This will be also a telltale sign that you have certain malware on your computer. So um, some malware, it will start deleting sectors on your computer. Some malware will just corrupt areas. Some malware will do whatever. But sometimes you will get telltale signs. I got videos on here on, on my channel. Um, and I'll, that'll be linked down below on how to actually use this to see what happened during your last blue screen death, what caused it, and stuff of this nature. And th those also are telltale signs that something is off. It's not 100% with that, but um, that, that should help you narrow it down. And, and seeing the dates on there, if you notice that there's uh, dates, times, and whatever, you can actually see that in... Um, in, in you can actually see that's um, when these problems start happening. Notes that um, I, I highly suggest that you check out the videos in the description because I get more in detail on what you should look at because there's a lot of information in there that no one should care about it one way or another. It's like saying, oh, um, you know, it's like, it's like you're driving and um, your GPS is alerting you that you're going half a mile over speed limits. You don't care. The cop probably doesn't care because even their stuff is not that fine-tuned where they should care and um, and so on. So it, it's, it's pointless. It's just, you know, it, it's not even warning you something that is, is majorly wrong or something that you really need to pay attention to. It's, it's more just, you know, alerting you, just alert you type of things, which is better than not. Um, you know, it's better alert if, if possible. So uh, the next thing is, is the, um, it's a pretty cool thing that you get on Windows 10. I don't know if you get them before Windows 10, so just know that. But on um, 
Windows 10, they actually have a pretty cool thing where you can actually see a reliability monitor. You can look it up on, I don't think it's in the God mode. I, I can't find it in there. But on start, just type in reliability monitor and um, this should come up. This is basically showing you um, details. So, for example, like um, at that time, um, I had a problem for some reason with that installer going down. Maybe I, I should, probably shouldn't have shutting it down. And you can actually see when you had actual critical events. Again, it's, it's like I said before with the event. It's, you're going to see the same stuff. It's just a prettier interface. And um, it's easier to see, okay, you had a bunch of problems this one day versus another day. And um, you can see, okay, do I actually care about that or not? So, for example, like, um, like, like that um, Edge, Microsoft Edge, I don't necessarily care about that. And what I can see is, oh, um, you know, that that's the only major problems for that area. Where I can look at some of these other areas and I can see, okay. Um, like I, say, for example, if I see, like, the uh, it says successful application installed and I don't recognize that and going, going down here. Basically, uh, um, what I can do is, is start taking a look at stuff in, in a little bit more detail and figure out what's going on. But for the most part, what I'm looking at is, is the critical events, the the warnings, and stuff of that nature. Um, but anyways, this is a, is a worthwhile tool to look at, um, and you can see the events that comes up. Um, and, and just looking for again on your start reliability monitor. It's the same information you get out here, but it's easier to look at. There's um, Again, I, I, I'll link down below a video on how, or several of them hopefully, on how to tell if your computer has a virus by doing detailed methods. Again, these these detailed methods are extremely expert-like. What I mean by this is anyone can do it. The problem is, is it's so detailed and so methodical that the average person is just simply just won't have the patience for it um and you're going to find more than not you're going to be doing in vain there's there's just going to be very little or no reason most of the time that when you're doing it now one thing i will note is anytime that you feel like there is an actual problem with your computer is task manager is a great tool to have notice that i actually have a pin on my taskbar and uh, basically, you can go through here, see what programs are supposed to be there, what's not. Um, you can go to Formats, Open Resource Monitor, and this will actually give you more information. Now, as far as that goes, I mean, like you can you can sum these processes. So, for example, uh, going into here, try to find something. I can suspend a process, um, and this is what I was uh, talking about. I got videos on how to tell if you have viruses on the, your computer. The reason why that's important to note to look at that particular video, given that you want to go in that detail, is I explain in quite detail on how to find these particular viruses where they will have a program that will only last for a split seconds at a time for probably about literally half a second so quickly that you won't notice um, it will show up and go away very quickly and um, all it's doing is seeing that if it, the actual main malware is running if it's not then it cranks it up well the thing is is how do you how do you know you know that's going on so you can pause it again to real detail on that type of stuff but it is worthwhile to note that okay if I think that is gone if that's causing problems I can actually suspend the process to figure out if that fixes things so say for example if I think uh, whatever is using a lot of my CPU or whatever like uh, I can actually go ahead and spin it and see okay it, 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 it fixes it note with things like uh, that you're working on like on Adobe Premiere or, or something for school or work. 
if you suspend a process, it, it it can be as good as canceling the process itself. In some cases, some cases not so much. Some cases, you can continue doing whatever, like some games and stuff of that nature. But I personally have seen it where just by suspending it, you basically um, cancel the project altogether. All Especially if there's outside reliability resources that um, you didn't know about. So as far as that goes, um, that's pretty much about it. If you got any questions or anything else, then feel free to leave that in the comment section. And I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. Leave a like, subscribe, share, and um, feel free to, to uh, check out my other videos. Hope you have a great day.